I'm just about to put on this timing pulley which goes down on the engine down here but before I put it on there I just want to point out something there's a little hole through this pulley at that point there and on the uh, the mount where it goes to there's actually a little uh, little little divot thing just down here right there I don't know if you can see it now that's a crit that's a timing mark as well and that needs to line up with the with the crank down the bottom here when that's on top dead center that needs to line up at the same time and that will sync the uh, timing with the uh, with the crankshaft uh, but it's actually very difficult to see because you'd have to see through this hole here down and line up the point there it's rather difficult to do uh, I didn't do this actually so somebody actually before me before I had this car um, actually put a little paint dot right there and on the crank itself if I can find it it's uh, there's another little dot right here now if you're changing this belt the mechanic obviously who's changed this belt previously before you take the belt off if you make a little dot there and a little dot there with the correct points of the timing marks there it makes it much easier to put the thing back together again rather than peering around the side of the engine trying to see through this hole here to the other point there because it's almost impossible back inside the engine there to do that not it not completely impossible but nearly impossible so uh, that'll be obvious down the track when I point out how to sync the timing but uh, just want to point it out so you can see what it is and what I'm talking about now we're just going to look at the uh, setting up of the uh, valve timing if you look here you'll see that the little nick on a pulley here that one there is lined up with that little point there on the, on the casting of the uh, engine there that engine now is the crankshaft here is pointing atop the top dead center. Now I've put a I've put a 14 mil socket on that and I turned that around to that point there. Up the top of the engine, up the top of the engine, we have the little paint little mark that I pointed out before there, and there's top dead center. But if you put this just a little bit, about a half a tooth before that, you'll see why down the track because what you can do is you can pull this up and make the belt tight when that light latches in it just makes it a little bit easier to set the thing in now the timing pulley is this thing down here uh, it's a bit hard to see but there's the crank right down the, the bottom it comes up past a, uh, a um, an idler it goes around this water pump here uh, goes back underneath here over the top here around the uh, the cam pulley and then down all the way down to to this if you can see it this particular one here which is the oil pump and so the water pump oil pump and cam are all done off the same belt now when I change this belt you usually do uh, there's a uh, front main seal it's a sealed in the front of the engine you change the um, oil pump seal and you replace the water pump each and every time and in the kit it also comes with a new idler and spring and what have you so basically you buy the belt and all the bits and pieces that uh, go towards uh, doing this so it costs a couple hundred bucks when this is done now it's brand new but uh, I, I probably should have done it when I did the uh, the uh, when I noticed the problem with the uh, valve stem seals but I kind of thought it would be all right but uh, anyway so now I'm just going to hook up the belt and we'll see if we can just tighten this up and tension this up and get this in the right spot. Now some overhead cam engines have two of these pulleys, one here and one over there. And the earlier um, Celica I had had a, a GE engine, the 3S GE engine in it and it had two pulleys uh, and the belt went right over the top of the two of them and drove the two camshafts. This one of course has a gear drive out in the head itself. Uh, um, I've no idea why it's different uh, maybe it's the size of the head maybe it's to try and get the size down or something like that But uh, so if you've got one that uh, has two pulleys well obviously you just line up with two pulleys but uh, if your belt's not broken 
it'd be a good idea if you get a little bit of paint and uh, do exactly what uh, this former mechanic did on this one and put little dots on the thing and it's much easier to see rather than trying to look down this hole here and trying to find the, uh, the, the timing marks. So that's how it all works and I'll, I'll hook up the belt and uh, then I'll just make sure we get this thing tightened up. Now I've got the belt in place, I've hooked it over this, all the pulleys and what have you and all I'm going to do is just give this a bit of a nudge back here I've got the thing hooked in place, now what happens is that needs to be tight on this side here of the belt now that I've got that tight on the, this side here I need to put this spring up into place down here, hook it on this little latch thing and then do up this nut here which will uh, put the tension correct. Once I've done that I'll just crank it around two turns because uh, the uh, this pulley here is twice the size of the other one, twice the number of teeth so it's two turns of the crank to one turn of that because it's a four stroke engine. So what I'll do now is I'm going to hook up this spring here and then do up that nut. So now I think I've got this right. And what you do is you give it a couple of goes have a few shots if it's out a little bit, unlatch it again. And once you think you've got it correct, just crank it around a couple of turns on the bottom crank and make sure everything's nice and tight before you do this particular bolt up here, which basically locks it in place. And that provides the tension for the for the belt. So now that I've got that done up, I'll, uh, I'll uh, tighten this bolt up and basically the timing is correct.